everybody, and you're also welcome to Heresy, your African history channel. My name is Vanessa Danso Eraja Chewa, and I will be your historian on this platform. On today's episode, we will be talking about the Adinkra symbols. Now, before we actually get into this episode, I would like to give you a little bit of a background information on the Adinkra symbols and on how they actually originated. Um, a lot of people have the assumption that the Adinkra symbols actually stemmed from Kofi Adinkra, who was a king from the Jaman people back in the day. Um, but that's what, that was actually not the case. Let me tell you a little bit of that story. So there was a war between the Asante and the Jaman people back in 1818. And according to that story, um, the Asante people who captured that king saw that he was wearing cloth with Adinkra symbol stamped on it. And they saw the cloth and they were like, ooh, we just have to have it. And they copied it and that's how that story came to be. But that's not actually how that happened. There's enough proof to say that the Adinkra symbols were actually present before that war, um, one year before that actually even, because there was this man, an Englishman, and his name was Thomas Baudich, and he obtained a cloth from Kumase back in 1817, which war actually happened, and there was Adinkra symbols stamped on that cloth. So it's safe to say that Adinkra symbols were present even before that war actually happened. So I actually wanted to give you that little bit of information, and now we are going to dive into that story. I hope you like it, and I'll see you in the episode. Bye. Today, we are going to dive back into our Ghanaian history and cover the topics of Adinkra symbols. Now, most of us have seen these symbols on cloths, walls, artwork, and etc. And most of us even recognize that they are in fact Adinkra symbols. But it is safe to say that most of us don't know what the common ones are called or even what they stand for. And it is very safe to state that the knowledge of their history has definitely become a mystery. In this history class, I will be teaching you about their true history, some of their names and their meanings. Now, Adinkra is an Akan word which means farewell or goodbye. And with time, the Adinkra symbols became a visual system of various symbolic representations of ethics, morality, advice, concepts, and ideas. Now, these symbols were printed on fabrics that were to be worn on funerals to pay their last respects with the purpose of sharing subtle underlying messages. The beautiful part of this is, not everybody back then was able to read or write, but almost everybody did understand these symbols, so it became an oral tradition, an illustrative verbal system that worked. Until the middle of the 20th century, there were about 50 frequently repeated symbols. As with most Asante arts, there is a highly acknowledged verbal component to the visual images. The meaning of many of these symbols is explained by generally well-known proverbs that are associated with a particular symbol. In the 21st century, the corpus of stamp designs, which means the original collection of Adinkra symbols, had expanded to well over 500 symbols. The Asante oral tradition attributes the origin of the Adinkra symbols to the German in modern-day Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire. An Englishman named Thomas Edward Baudich collected a piece of Adinkra cloth in 1817, which demonstrates that the Adinkra art existed before the German Asante War in 1818. Baudic obtained this cotton cloth in Kumase, the capital of the Asante Empire. The patterns were printed using a carved calabash stamp and a vegetable base dye. The cloth features 15 stamped symbols, including insuma, which means stars, double donor drums, and diamonds. It is now to be viewed in the British Museum. 
The next oldest piece of Adinkra textile was sent in 1825 from the Elmina Castle to the Royal Cabinet of Curiosities in The Hague in response to an assignment from Major F. Last, who was appointed temporary commander of the Dutch Gold Coast. He probably had a cloth commissioned for William I of the Netherlands, which would explain why the coat of arms of the Netherlands is in the center. The other symbols are typical of the older Adinkra collection. It is now on display in the National Museum of Ethnology in Leiden. Now, even though they are now worn by anyone, stylishly wrapped around women and men on any special occasion, Adinkra cloths were traditionally only worn by royalty and spiritual leaders for funerals and other very special occasions. There is evidence to indicate that the wearing of Adinkra cloth was once a royal prerogative, and that through a process not yet fully described, Adinkra came down to the general public during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, becoming incorporated as an element of General Akan funerary usage. Stamped Adinkra cloth were worn by kings during the weekly sessions at court, when the state council, the Asantiman, meets on Mondays and Thursdays, and when he hosts public sittings on Saturdays. When meetings of the state council were in session at Manchia Palace, members of the Asante Man wore dark cloths, also known as birisi, which were often stamped. This reflects the seriousness of the meetings and the responsibility of those in attendance. Royal power and authority is reflected in a protocol at the court in Kumase, which forbids wearing the same Adrinkwa symbol as the Asante Hene when sitting in state. To do so would seem to be tremendously disrespectful to the king, leading to an awkward if not intolerable situation. If it is a meeting of extreme gravity to discuss, for example, the possibilities of war, the king would wear a dark brown kuntun kuni cloth, known as apesa entoma, which mostly had twigs of the apesa tree stuck into it. He also had a large chenye or umbrella stamped with the adinkwa symbols, a tool, which means rifle, and afana, which means cross swords, that was held over him at state functions to protect him. Cloths, in fact, are chosen for the king to wear with particular emphasis upon an appropriate symbol for a specific occasion or ceremony as an aspect of policy and statecraft. This selection is done by the Abai Asahine. These Adinkra images will proclaim the strength and power of the king, and therefore of the kingdom which would be seen and understood visually and proverbially by viewers and especially by those visiting the royal courts upon diplomatic missions. Adinkwa symbols worn by the king serve as a visual validation of his authority and claim to power. The symbol Abai in the king's house worn at court refers to the stone house which was built by Nana Osei Bunsu I during his reign 1802 and 1823 and has come to symbolize royal power, authority, and wealth. The Abain was the first two-story stone house in Kumase and became the royal place for objects, gifts, and the king's cloths. A number of these symbols argue the peaceful intent of the king, but also the ability to meet any threat once aroused. For example, the Adinkwa symbol known as Okoto, or the crab, means that it is difficult to draw a crab out of its hole, but once it's out, it fights with total commitment and ferocity. The stamped symbol, Obi Kanobi, I offend no one without provocation, argues the king's inherent peacefulness. Once aroused, however, the king is to be highly feared as projected through the image of Denchen, the crocodile, which was worn during time of war and of strife. The Adinkra stamp of cross swords, also known as Afina, or of the king's rifle, known as Ohine Tuo, or a combination of the two, the sword and a rifle cross, are direct references to his might. A number of symbols have specific references to victories gained by the king, the most well-known being the Adinkra Hene symbol, taken from the cloth worn by the defeated Jamai Hene Kofi Adinkra. There are certain symbols which were traditionally strictly reserved to the king only. In the past, they included Adinkra Hene, the king of stamps, and Osono, the elephant, among many others. A new symbol carved in 1992, the Ohine Chinye, which means the king's umbrella, also became a direct portrayal of a royal reign. This followed the use of Afina, which means the state sword, which was a chiefly symbol already in use for some time. Data recently collected 
of course that each king would have an adinkra symbol card which was to state in graphic form those attributes or characteristics he would wish to be known by and which eventually would become part of his identity during and past his reign. These symbols are rarely worn publicly. For example, the symbol Osnotia Afidiusua Unghri, which translates as when the elephant steps on a trap, it does not spring. This symbol indicates the strength, power, and willingness of the king. This is to portray the idea that a great man's troubles are dealt with so quietly that few are aware of it. It is therefore clearly understood that when dealing with Adinkra symbols as a means of political communication, visual and proverbial wisdom are required to participate in and fully understand a system of symbolic interchange of subtlety and multi-layered textures that come with it. The use of a written text instead of the Adinkra image reflects the grown ability to read and write as this becomes clearer by the transfer from symbolic motives to written text. Unfortunately, it also reflects the loss of what can be described as an Akan symbolic literacy. People go to school and they learn how to read and write and become literate, but meanwhile become illiterate when it comes to the Adinkra and their meanings. The use of Western text for Adinkra symbols dates at least to the 1940s, if not earlier, when a factory-made cloth was stamped with the letters A, B, C, D. However, there are positive aspects to these new appearances of Adinkra symbols. People do still seek to wear cloths which are part of their heritage and thereby keeping the tradition alive in a new domain of appearance. There are also new Adinkra symbols added to the collection of known symbols that continue the interplay between the verbal statement and the visual image. This proves the dynamism of the Akan society as they actively incorporate the arts of the past to the present, changing its appearance and its use to produce an art form suited to its time.